basically what I do in the book, because obviously I've outlined all of the, the, um, the symptoms, not everybody gets all of those symptoms. So basically what I do in the book, because um, really prior to COVID, you know, it was very challenging for people to even understand what was going on and even to talk to their doctor. And a lot of doctors weren't even really aware of it. So in the book, really what I do is help people identify what they're experiencing, you know, in a day to day way and map that on to you know, the cognitive domain. And then I actually, I give domain specific strategies to kind of cope with that. Uh, and, but then my main focus is really on lifestyle changes to boost brain health, but the strategies are sort of more temporary while you're kind of coping and living with brain fog, but some very general strategies I would say for living with brain fog, <clears throat> excuse me, would be something like, you know, avoid multitasking. It's a myth anyway. Your brain really was evolved to monotask. And so when we're, we think we're multitasking, what we're actually, what our brain is actually doing is task switching. And that comes at a cost um, uh, in terms of errors and um, time. So it takes longer and you make more errors than if you did it in sort of single file. Um, I would suggest as well to keep an easy stash. Um, certainly that's what I do. I have migraine, which is associated with brain fog. I also have an, uh, an autoimmune disease myself. So um, I keep an easy stash because I hate not to be productive. So I hate to give into it. So if you have a stash of easy stuff that kind of is no brainer stuff, you can then at least get on with doing something and not feel that you've lost a day. I think that helps because I think it helps men, you know, your mental health as well, because you don't want to get down on yourself because that's also going to impact um, on it. Remove distractors, remove, you know, declutter, declutter your workspace, declutter your laptop, declutter your brain, get stuff down on paper, you know, because you don't, your brain has, you know, it has to process billions of bits of information. And if you're really struggling to focus and you're doing that in a workspace that has a lot of clutter around it, you're making it quite difficult for your brain. Uh, give your brain breaks. You know, your brain is really, really brilliant, but don't expect, expect it to kind of work seven hours on the trot. Take breaks. I mean, normally I'd say sort of something like every 60 minutes, but if you've got brain fog, you know, take it, take breaks every 20 minutes or so. Give your brain a chance to recover. Get outside, take some fresh air, change of scenery, et cetera. Um, and just really do give yourself um, uh, breaks. In terms of life, lifestyle factors, um, Really, sleep is the most important thing. And, you know, if you are struggling to sleep at night, um, 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 my, my tip on that regard, you know, I, I, I would be to follow, sleep, you know, sleep, sleep hygiene, you know, which is regular, you know, regular sleep uh, schedule. Exposure to light is critical. Um, you know, our brain's been evolving for millions of years and electric light and blue light and all that is only very, very recent. So you've got to get out in daylight. I think people forget that. You need to get out in daylight and you also need to mimic nighttime, you know, dim your lights at nighttime, etc. cetera. Um, but um, I also think don't underestimate the value of napping. Um, if you are struggling to sleep at night, you know, you can use napping during the day to repay that sleep debt. Um, and, and I think that's really, really important. You've got to do everything in your power to, um, to try and restore your sleep. Um, physical exercise is so important. If you've got brain fog as a consequence of COVID or, you know, another chronic health condition, um, particularly COVID though, you need to start really small uh, and very gentle. You've been deconditioned. Your body maybe has been deconditioned. Your brain has been deconditioned probably a little as well, but very much baby steps. Um, and talk to your doctor about it, but, um, uh, you know, getting back to exercising can, can help immensely. Your diet plays a huge role. Um, it really, really does, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out. Uh, and again, you know, the Mediterranean diet, it just has the best evidence um, for, you know, good brain health. And, you know, that's lots of colorful fruit and vegetables, oily fish. So things like salmon and mackerel, um, uh, 
and get all your fats from like olive oil, uh, nuts, pulses, beans. It's a very, very easy diet to consume and to cook with. So it's like salads and soups and a Mediterranean diet is not pastas and pizzas. as A lot of people think um, it is, but as close to the natural form of the food as um, possible and managing stress is really critical. And actually what I do in my book is because I feel that people with brain fog, life is pretty challenging. I, I, I kind of, what I did is it's 30 days to think, um, faster, sharper, better, or something like that. Um, that, you know, I really just have, you know, week one, I focus on sleep, you know, another week it's exercise, another week it's diet. And, um, for managing stress that week, really what I focus on is getting, um, you to, um, commit to allowing an hour to scheduling an hour every day for you to have fun, to do something every day for yourself. It's a great way to manage stress. And I think often when we're stressed, what happens is actually we narrow focus to the thing that is stressing us. We lose our sense of humor. We exclude everything else, including people who would give us support. Um, so committing to an hour of me time for fun. Like laughter is nature's natural stress buster. When you laugh, you lower cortisol levels. I suggest in my corporate wellness talks that you keep a laughter stash on your laptop. And instead of waiting till you get stressed, when you feel that sort of stress rising or that panic or that anxiety, take 10 minutes out, open your laughter stash, whether it's memes, funny videos, a funny podcast. We usually all have something that kind of makes us laugh um, and go to that straight away because, you know, if you laugh, that cholesterol, you, you, you'll be stopping it before it gets starting. And if you think about it, um, you know, that's what we do in times of real crisis. You know, if we're grieving after somebody dies, what do we do sort of when we're waking them? We tell funny stories. We laugh till our bellies hurt, you know? And then sometimes even, you know, if you're sharing, if you break up with a boyfriend and, and you know, those tears then turn to laughter, do you know, it's kind of a way of dealing with terrible stress and smiling. And I think during the pandemic, people forgot to smile and with the masks and, and the thing is smiling has just so many health benefits. And, and, and people often think that smiling is a reactive thing or that you need something to smile about and you don't, you can smile to yourself and it doesn't matter if you look crazy. The point of the matter is that when you smile, you know, it releases serotonin, um, it, it lowers blood pressure, it boosts immune function. It's, it's really got so many health benefits um, that it's something that we need to do more and more often. Uh, and I think if you do something, if you give yourself me time that involves doing something that makes you smile or makes you lose yourself, as I was talking about earlier, where you get into the flow and, and your brain is taken away from any pain or stress or worry you have. You have this wonderful escape from stress and you don't need any money for that. You don't need, you know, it's, 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 it's here, you know, it's inside here and it, it's a great way to, um, yeah, to boost your health and to, 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 to manage stress.